CD Visa Review. Our rating. 4 Star. All new CD Visa debuts VW Group's latest tech and sets the standard new super minis have to beat. 4. Passenger and luggage space, efficient petrol engines, sharp design, strong on tech. Against. Poor plastic quality in places, equipment levels, small mirrors are style over substance. Seat has been chosen to debut the latest VW Group platform tech in the new Evisa, called MQBA0. It'll eventually be found in the VW Polo, Audi A1, and Skoda Fabia plus a range of small subs, but for now it's the Evisa that jumps the gun on its rivals and sets new super mini standards. The lightweight, high platform gives the now five-door only Evisa a grown-up feel very much like the bigger Auto Express award-winning Leon, and therefore, the VW Golf, too. It's supremely quiet, even with 1.0-liter three-cylinder engines under the bonnet, while the ride feels mature, too comfy, but keeping you informed of the state of the road surface. MQBA0 also means the Evisa gets lots of safety, connectivity, and luxury tech that we haven't seen in this sector before. There's pedestrian detection with auto braking, adaptive cruise control, wireless charging for mobiles, LED lights, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Sadly, though, much of the tech is reserved for range-topping FR and Excellence models and on the options list for others. There's good space on board for passengers and luggage, while quality is impressive on the whole, although dash top plastics are a bit hard. Our choice. CD Visa FR 1.0115 PS. As with many new Super Minis, the Evisa is only available as a five-door model. However, even then it's one of the more stylish Super Minis on the market with plenty of sharp creases on the bodywork, triangular LED lights and strong quality. Rivals look dull in comparison. This is the fifth generation of the Evisa, with 5.4 million sold in over 30 years and 3 million still on the road. Yet this is the first to lead the VW Group by using the very latest MQBA0 chassis tech, well before the rest of the group's super minis. Much of the tech will be shared with the rest of the group, including engines. However, diesels are wisely absent from the price list in the UK, leaving it to three versions of the 1.0-liter three-cylinder engine with 74, 94, and 114 bhp choices. There's also a 148bhp 1.5-liter petrol engine. The biggest seller is likely to be the 94bhp engine in SE technology spec. This sits above S and SE models, with FR and Excellence offering a sportier or more luxurious take at the top of the range for the same price. A hot Cooper version is expected to follow, although Seat insists that no decision has been made on that yet. As well as ditching the three-door Evisa SC, the Evisa ST estate model has also bitten the dust, due to the impending arrival of the Arona small SUV, again based on the MQBA0 platform. What the platform gives the Evisa is a new level of tech for the super mini market including the likes of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, plus full LED lights front and rear, wireless phone charging and pedestrian detection with auto brake. There's also a punchy Beats audio option that's well priced, although most of the tech is sadly on the options list. Engines, Performance, and Drive 4.5 Star The 114BHP triple is smooth, punchy and characterful, the 1.5 is smooth but a bit bland. We've only sampled two of the four available engines in the Evisa so far, with the more impressive of the two being the 1.0-liter turbocharged three-cylinder motor producing 114 bhp. As with all three-cylinder engines there's an unusual thrum under acceleration, but only when you're pushing will you hear anything. At cruising speeds, the engine is almost entirely inaudible and smooth with it. Acceleration in gear is decent enough as the turbo does its job, while the Evisa with this engine feels brisk enough away from standstill the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint takes a reasonable 9.3 seconds. Efficiency is good, two seat claims an average of 60.1 mpg with CO2 emissions of 108 g km. 
it's no wonder diesel versions won't be offered in the UK. The best-selling engine is likely to be the 9.4bhp version of the same engine, while there's also a 7.4bhp non-turbo for entry-level cars. The 1.5-liter four-cylinder engine we also drove offers a promising 1.48bhp, although it's so smooth and refined it never feels especially fast or frantic. Again, things are silent on the move, while the slick six-speed manual box helps you shift gears with a minimum of effort. If you want an auto, a 7-speed DSG double-clutch auto is available on the 114bhp 1.0-liter car for an extra 1,080 pounds. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 4.6 star. All 1.0-liter models promise over 5.7 MPG, with the two more powerful versions being the most frugal. Although the CD Visa with the 1.5-liter four-cylinder engine has yet to be homologated so no figures are available, we do have stats for the three three-cylinder units. The most powerful, and most expensive, of the three, the 114bhp unit, is also the most fuel-efficient claiming a 60.1 mpg average and 108g slash km of CO2. The standard stop-slash-start system works seamlessly as you roll to a halt and take the car out of gear, cutting in with barely a whisper as you depress the clutch again. The 94bhp 1.0-liter posts identical figures to the more powerful unit, although it has a lower CO2 figure of 106g-slash-km thanks to its skinnier tires. All of those models will have a first-year VED rate of 140 pounds and a benefit-in-kind tax rate of 20%. The cheaper, non-turbo 7.4 bhp engine is still reasonably impressive with a claimed average of 57.6 mpg and emissions of 112 g-slash-km of CO2. Although you'll save a fair few hundred pounds on the list price, you'll pay 160 pounds for the first year's VED, while the benefit-in-kind rate for company car drivers is a touch higher at 21%. Interior, Design, and Technology 4.7 star. The exterior's sharp lines carry over to the spacious interior with strong tech on offer to boot. Although the new CD Visa is a fraction, just 2 mm, shorter than the old model, the MQB A0 platform means the wheelbase has extended by 95 mm giving much more space inside seats as rear legroom is improved by 35 mm, while the square-shaped boot is especially spacious at 355 liters. More importantly the car has got much wider by 85 mm and it sits ever so slightly lower giving it a sportier look on the road. That's accentuated by the sharp creases along the sides, the narrow front lights with LED daytime running lights and more creases running down the bonnet. This is a seriously good-looking Super Mini. The good looks continue to the inside with more sharp lines around the dash and plenty of shoulder and headroom in the front and back. A six-foot passenger can just about sit behind a six-foot driver in reasonable comfort, but there'll be plenty of room for three children across the back bench. In spite of the sharp lines across the dash, it's not as adventurous as the outside, but it's dominated by a touchscreen system for the infotainment. Most buyers will opt for SE technology trim and above, so we'll get an 8-inch screen with navigation but you'll only get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto as standard if you opt for FR or Excellence trim, otherwise it's a £150 option. S models get a 5-inch black and white touch screen, while that's upgraded to color for SE cars. Heating and ventilation controls are separate and sit below the touch screen, while the instrument binnacle features two large clear dials and a screen in between that can show navigation, audio or vehicle information. Slightly disappointing inside is the quality of the plastic on the dash and door top. It looks fine, and feels okay when you first touch it. But prod it and you'll realize it's hard you can bet the Ibiza's Polo equivalent will get a soft touch dash top. Still, for us the interior is good enough and that wouldn't stop us recommending it. You'll always get a strong palette of colors to choose from with a seat with a lovely deep red or striking blue. The gold slash beige mystic magenta isn't quite as successful, though. Sat NAV, stereo and infotainment.
Every Ibiza we tested at the car's launch came fitted with a Beats audio upgrade, giving a 7-speaker 300W sound system that can be connected via USB or Bluetooth, which is a dottle to pair. Although the systems hadn't properly been run in, they offered impressive sound quality in the Super Mini sector, but more so given the upgrade price of just a few hundred pounds for that it's highly recommended with a good spread of detailed sound and punchy bass. The 8-inch touchscreen is similar to those in other VW Group cars, with menus popping up as your hand is sensed near the screen even when slotting into 1st, 3rd, or 5th gear. It features clear and simple to follow menus, while the navigation features pinch and expand functionality on the screen. There are two knobs either side of the glass for controlling volume and station search, while heating and ventilation controls sit underneath the screen so you don't have to wade through menus to change the temperature. Practicality, Comfort, and Boot Space 4.7 Star Wheelbase stretch and increased width has much improved passenger and luggage space. Size The Ibiza is only available as a 5-door now, and it's much wider, a touch lower and a fraction shorter than before. It's still just over 4 meters long, but the added width makes it feel like a bigger car. Leg room, headroom and passenger space. Seat seems to have done the impossible by making the Ibiza 2 mm shorter, yet offering much more space inside. Leg room in the back is up 35 mm, thanks mostly to the 95 mm increase in wheelbase. It all equates to one of the most spacious cars in the class with space for a 6-foot passenger to sit in reasonable comfort behind a 6-foot driver with plenty of head and shoulder room. Three adults across the back will be tight, but children will be fine. Access to the rear seats is good and the view out is impressive, too even without a panoramic roof the car feels light and airy. Boot the rear seats will split and fold to increase the already impressive 355-liter luggage space, while a two-stage boot floor will keep things level for loading or drop lower for maximum capacity. There are no complaints about access to the luggage space, either the seat badge on the boot door doubles as the release handle and the door swings high up out of the way. Reliability and Safety 4.3 Star Customers score their cars and dealers poorly, but new cars have plenty of safety tech. Seat has had a mixed time of things in our driver power customer satisfaction survey, finishing in 18th place out of 32 in last year's survey. Its dealers don't fare much better, either. They've been rock bottom in previous surveys, but rose last year to 27th place still a disappointing result. On the safety front, Every car gets airbags for the driver and front passenger, plus side and curtain bags, too. There are active front head restraints, autonomous emergency braking and electronic stability systems. An impressive roster of big car safety options include tiredness recognition, adaptive cruise control, pedestrian detection with auto brake and parking sensors. Warranty As with rivals and other members of the VW Group, a new seat will be covered by a manufacturer three-year warranty.